Back to a foggy day here on Lake Lamont. Now, since yesterday was a complete blowout for the second straight year, rough water conditions have delayed official BRM qualifying to this race morning with 20 drivers from 11 different nations who will take to the water for the first time here on Lac Lemon. Instead of the usual three qualifying sessions today, it will be one giant one hour time frame for the drivers to navigate their way around this 2.1 kilometer six pin circuit position for the start of the second round of this 2017 UIM Formula One H2O racing season. The question is, when do you go for the fast time? Do you wait, do it later on? Do you do it early? We'll have to wait and see. Who will be king of qualifying? Well, this six-pin, 2.1-kilometer race circuit here in Lac Lamont has for the past year created all sorts of havoc and interesting uh, situations on it. Real drama. Jonathan, let's get you in here. Let's help explain what uh, makes this course so difficult to get right. Yeah, about two kilometers all the way around. And as you said, Steve, normally quite a lot of drama here. We're on open water. Thank goodness the wind has dropped. Conditions looking perfect. Six turn boys, one right hand and five left hand turns and a, a lot of room for overtaking. So it's it's going to be a it's going to be a great circuit. Looking at it now, you come down past the start finish line there. Very short shoot, about 60 meters into turn number one. Then from turn number one, you've got a long, long, long straight, 590 meters up to the far end of the circuit and then you're around another 100 meters uh, between two and three and then the back straight this is where you've got to really hang the boat out take a risk if you're going to be fast here today around number four that's the only uh, right hand turn that we've got 450 meters then blasting down to the final two corners and 120 between five and six and then 360 right down to the finish line so a great circuit for racing and for overtaking hopefully Roughest course anywhere on the season. Now, a large field of 20 drivers from 11 different nations are here for the final European round of the year. There's a few new fresh faces in the lineup. Let's take a look at the qualifying list for today's 21st Grand Prix of France. And leading the fray will be the man uh, number one, of course, Philippe Shep. He's hoping to come up with a victory for himself. And it's just a matter of time whether uh, he can finally uh, finish a race, of course, for uh, Philippe Shep, the driver who is the three-time world champion. He has failed to finish uh, in the uh, two races that he ran here. And right now, out on the field, we're taking a look at Grant Trask, the rookie who has done all sorts of impressive racing in only three races that he's put together, Jonathan. And for him, he has two top 10 finishes and three start starts. He had a great run in Portugal. He started all the way down to 19th in qualifying, but he finished seventh. Yeah, he's in pretty good shape out there. He's running a DSC bolt for the Interpass team, which is uh, owned and run by Duarte Benevente, who's running the number 10 boat today. And Trask in free practice this morning, which was only about an hour ago, he put up some really good times. I was talking to his dad, and he said that we're just going to run the boat, make sure everything's working fine, because there's only a, an hour between free practice and time trials and incidentally this time with these trials it's going to be a one hour full time trial session so it means that right up until the last minute of the one hour session we're not going to be, know who is actually on pole position but talking about Trask there comes from Australia is really getting the grips now with this uh, DSC boat and watch out for him here this afternoon at the Grand Prix. Yeah interesting uh, facts on him of course he uh, started young because his father Bob raced for uh, many years on the Formula One Tour from 2002 to 2008, but then he sat out. They took a three-year break of racing to concentrate on the family business, and then he jumped back in it with a vengeance, and uh, he has been very strong, and uh, he looks very dominant in Australia, but at the same time, he's learning it slowly, and I think he's doing it the right way, Jonathan. He's not pushing himself. He's doing it a little bit at a time. And as you get a chance to see now, this is the man who won the race a year ago. This is Alex Corella, three-time world champion. And this morning, Jonathan, he came up with a, a strong run. He was uh, just less than two-tenths of a second off the fast time that Philippe Shep set in late. He did a 48-3-1. Alex Corella, second quickest in morning warm-up. And yes, in practice this morning, this was only about 15 or 20 minutes ago. They didn't have much time to jump back, make changes, 
and just jump back out and go racing again. I mean, they literally had to stop the boat, shut it off, make changes, and go right back out again for qualifying. Yeah, and you don't often see the driver actually having to launch the boat, uh, get in there and strap himself in himself. But the time was tight. It's obviously caught a lot of these teams out a little bit because they've had to fine-tune the engines to make sure that everything's right for this qualifying session. We see Luis Ribeiro there on the left-hand side. He's the uh, uh, official here this weekend. He represents the UIM and uh, he keeps an eye on pretty much everything over the weekend. Uh, uh, Ahmed Al Hamli there, the Abu Dhabi driver, now running with a victory team under the uh, under the control of Scott Gilman, and uh, they're looking pretty strong out there. Free practice this morning. He looked very comfortable. I noticed they've done a lot of changes to this boat, Steve. They've tried to alleviate some of the air that is underneath the tunnel, so he's got a bit more control, and it's not too lively. And it's quite interesting to see how they've modified that boat and uh, might put him in good stead out here today yeah we'll find out here's cedric de Guy. now this man who is a veteran uh, racer his father also uh, raced for many years in the uh, formula one tour and actually his father today is doing the race uh, pa for the crowd as well but cedric de Guy really made a statement he's only started 13 grand prix before this weekend but last year he had a tremendous year where he did very well and including an avion here his first full year of racing back at, since uh, 2005. He started 17th in the race a year ago, Jonathan. He didn't qualify well, but he hung in there, and he fought his way up toward the front, and he finished fourth, which, if you look back in the 21 years of racing here in France, for a French driver, he tied the best finish ever for a French driver, finishing fourth a year ago here. Yeah, you can see him running now. He's not really at full chat. About three-quarter throttle there, just getting used to the water, just seeing if it's changed in the last hour since the time he was out before. This is where we're going to see him put a lap. He's coming to the last turn, boy. So he's coming down now that 360 meter straight onto the start line as we pick him up there now, Steve. How is that boat running? Not bad, but uh, not as fast, I think, as some of the other guys. He goes down now, down to the far end of the circuit. 590 meters. That's quite a long way for these engines to be running full charts. Nine and a half to 10,000 RPM. Down that short route to 100 meters into turn number three. And then, as I said, this is where you've got to watch the racing today. Down the back straight. Halfway down the straight, we've got a right-hand turn. The only one on the circuit here today. And the guys that can really get round that corner, let's see how he does it. The ones that hardly tap off a little bit, good turn there, are the ones that are going to make up good ground. 450 metres now, down to the far, last but one turn, number five. Well, as he comes through a very tricky uh, situation, five and six, on the very west side of this race course, that's going to be really the telling tale. We've had more action in the last three years on this race circuit down between turn four the right hand as you mentioned in five and six that's where all the drama is placed here on this uh, Lac Le Mans. Yeah it tends to get quite rough down there doesn't it Steve? Uh, you've got rollers coming in from the far end of the circuit and uh, if there's going to be any boats going over chances are it's going to be between number two and three but most definitely between five and six so uh, watch out for that this afternoon. Now the Maverick racing team has only been put together two years ago. It started in 2004 15 and since that time they have added two other drivers and uh, Cedric de Guin and uh, Amore uh, Jusson who was the driver he's in the number 74 machine and then the rookie we can't wait to see coming out in uh, boat number 70 that's uh, Benjo Robert and he is going to uh, try his hand at Formula One for the very first time so they've got a three boat team and speaking of a team that's uh, really strong here's Marit Stromoy coming out the veteran from Norway who has a career victory as a career pole position she is starting her 70th race Jonathan she's got that one pole back in uh, Portimao in 2011 now for her here in France she has uh, started uh, two various times in the past she's got no points and uh, she's hoping to uh, do a little bit better today yeah she's running okay at the moment there but she's 1.41 down on the first lap but my guess is not as we pick up um, one of the uh, CTIC China boats getting in there now, getting comfortable making sure that he's well strapped in in that, in that cockpit with a 5 point harness you can see that very little room in the cockpit so they have to actually tighten the belt
point where is she 1.2 1.3 no 2.3 down at the moment coming through again there Stromoy just improving but top spot yeah Corella coming out late we saw him get into the on a 48 Was one of the first drivers out. He was the number one boat out. He had clear water and he ran a, a very a reasonable 49.9. They're feeling maybe the conditions will only get better. This is Peter Mora. He is uh, the son in law of uh, three time world champion Philippe Shep. He's the new member of this team for the CTIC Shenzhen China team. And for him, he is a seven-time world endurance champion in class three. Now, for many years, the French S3000 series was very, very popular, run strongly throughout the country of France, and it's kind of died out a bit. So really, for a lot of the French drivers to get now into Formula One, they have to uh, uh, slide in and uh, take over. They go from endurance racing to Formula One racing. And here we get Ahmed al Hamli looking at him again. And I remember the drama that he had, Jonathan. He was fighting against Sean Torrenti, his teammate, for pole position in Portimao nine weeks ago. And he smashed into the dock hard and destroyed the boat and failed to start. So Ahmed al Hamli coming around the line. Let's see if he can improve. He does. He goes from fourth up to third spot with a 49.96. So he's just a, a shade under a second slow than Alex Corella, but Ahmed al Hamli, not the best way you want for your victory team to start off a 2017 season. No, they were fairly quick this morning in free practice, both uh, Al Hamley and Sean Torrente, the American driver, but and you can see Scott Gilman there talking to him on the radio, but they weren't the fastest, that's for sure. We noticed that uh, Philippe Chiap, uh, the current world champion, <coughs> he went out there um, and he put in, he was running sixth or seventh, something like that, and then right towards the end of the circuit, he put in one fast lap and just obliterated everybody else's times so it looks from free practice this morning as though Chiap still is the guy he is the benchmark anyway we've got Carella now in the lead with Trask second good report good performance from Trask Al Hamni moved into third 0.98 behind Benevente the Portuguese driver now hanging on in there in fourth Stromoy fifth and Cedric de Guin, the local French driver, but he's 3.08 seconds off that uh, fastest time. Just over 11 minutes into this 60-minute session, and uh, things are ever-changing. I'll tell you what, let's bring in our third member of our broadcast crew. I haven't had a chance to say hello to her. Let's go down and join Gemma Kerr, and she'll give us the latest goings-on in the paddock. Gemma? Okay, so two things that I've noticed this morning. The first thing is how slowly it took to fill up here on the pontoon. Obviously, they had practice this morning, have all come in and made lots of tweaks on the boat and just taken their time to get out onto the water for qualifying. They have just one hour to give their absolute best lap. There's no other phases to qualification. The second thing that I noticed was the difference between the drivers and their attitude. First of all, I saw Grant Trask. He was the first one down here, normally always smiley and friendly. He was not so smiley this morning. He said good morning, but he was game face on. And then by complete contrast, Francesco Contando walked past and he was laughing and joking and messing around with us. So you can really see the different attitudes. Grant, his debut here in Evian, so probably feeling a bit apprehensive. Francesco, we spoke to him yesterday and he was relaxed. So you can definitely see that. F1 Atlantic team were the first ones out on the water. Um, but it is filling up now. So I'm going to throw straight back to you and you can see what's going on on the race course. Thank you, Gemma, for all the updates that you've got. And, of course, uh, what she stated is very true, is that some drivers, you know, it's kind of last second. We're being forced to do everything right now at the moment. Some people feel very uh, strongly about the pressure they're feeling on what they got to do. Other people just they just let it roll off the back like, like a duck. They just say, what, whatever is whatever going to happen today. Yeah, but they're all pretty focused. I mean, people just have different ways of showing how they're focused. But uh, let's pick up Grant Trask again here now. He's in that second position at the moment. The, I'll tell you what's happened, Steve, is that the water definitely has got a little bit rougher, um, which may play into some people's uh, hands, you know. And uh, we're picking up there now Philip Roms, finished second here last year, looked really good out there this morning. 
didn't quite have the pace of some of these top drivers but when it comes to the race he's in good shape there's no question he's one of the in fact he is the youngest driver here and uh, Sammy Salio who owns that uh, Mad Croc team um, has really trained him so well over the last four or five years he went from Formula 4 into Formula 1 taking him a little bit of time now to get used to uh, the handling and the speed uh, differential of that boat but uh, really coming on strong and this could be one good race for him hopefully Massimo Ruggiero there talking to him on the headset for Philip Rams as you mentioned as the youngster who uh, his sister actually races now in GT30 class he came out of the uh, small classes in Finland that uh, he was sponsored by Sami Celio. Celio took a look at him and said, this kid who's just a teenager has got some wonderful capabilities and a lot of talent, so let me slide him into the team. And he brought him up into F4s. And uh, his father used to race F4s back in the 70s. So Philip Roms has been around racing. He's grown up with racing and just 23 years young now, and he continues to get better and better. He's the only driver here who has been on the podium both times. Uh, in the last two years in Evian, so he is uh, feeling good about uh, racing here on the circuit. It builds up a lot of confidence as we go on to board with our three-time world champion, Philippe Shep, and Philippe Shep is hoping that he can finish the race today, Jonathan. Oddly enough, he's only not failed to uh, finish uh, three races in the last uh, few years, but both of them have come year to year, back to back here in Evian, and uh, he's hoping to be able to make a big statement. He leads this championship. He won in Portimao, and he would just love to put a stranglehold on it early on with another victory today. Yeah, although they're known as CTIC China, as we go on board there with him, you can see the sort of speed that the boats are running at. It's very much a French team. Uh, the team is owned by Philippe Desertan from La Rochelle. Um, most of the mechanics are French. Uh, Alex Ledden does the tuning of these Mercury V6 2.5 liter engines. He comes from uh, Montreal, which is a, a French-speaking part of, uh, of Canada. So, you know, really, uh, and of course, Ch um, uh, the, the driver himself, Philippe Chiap, together with his son-in-law, Peter Morin, again French, and he's the guy to watch out for now today, uh, Chiap, because we saw in free practice that, uh, you know, he was playing around on there for the circuit. He wasn't pushing too hard right until the end when he put in a blinding lap, Steve, and showed everybody else the way. The tenacity of this driver is amazing. It took him 83 races before he got his first victory in Kiev back in 2013. He was mired in the doldrums for many years, and since then he has really taken off. His first uh, podium was back in St. Petersburg in Russia in 2009. This is his 106th start. He's got eight victories, 30 podiums, but he puts it all together, and he's not phased by pressure. He's a keen businessman, Jonathan, and he knows what he needs to do, and he knows he doesn't have to win every race. It's just to be there, mm. to finish, to be up on the podium, and by God, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat him. And he's now on the fly as we take a look now at the rookie, Rashid al Quimsy from the UAE, who failed to start the opening round in Portugal because of engine problems. He's got one career start, and uh, he was the reigning Formula 4 S uh, champion, and they brought him into this team. He's now the third driver of Team Abu Dhabi. Yeah, Abu Dhabi, probably one of the biggest budget teams run by uh, Italian Guido Capellini. And uh, <clears throat> in the first race in Portugal this year, oh, they had a terrible time. But if we look at the uh, positions at the moment, Carella, who himself is a, a past world champion of the team Abu Dhabi, is in first. And Fanny al Kwamzi, who really has a, had a rough time for the last five or six Grand Prix. They built him a new boat, and Capolini was telling me yesterday he's very, very comfortable in this boat. They seem to have their engine program uh, back on track now, and uh, so we've got uh, Carella still in first, and Chiap now popped in there now, second position, al Kwamzi in third, and the Australian Bob Trask still hanging on there in fourth position, 0.94 from that fastest time. Well, I think uh, his father, Bob Trask, would be uh, very pleased with Grant Task yeah. as he's out there in that fourth spot. And um, 
We'll see how it all pans out right now. And uh, interestingly enough, by the way, you look down on the list. Now, 13 drivers have made their way out onto the circuit so far. We're almost 18 minutes into this one 60-minute session. And drivers that are still missing and unusually surprising, Sean Torrente has not made his way out. Either has Jonas Anderson and Emmerich Stark. Now, these are three drivers. Of course, Torrente had the pole and led the race for nine laps in Portugal. And uh, we expect to see him come out. He set a very fast time. He was third quickest in uh, morning practice. He was four-tenths of a second behind Philippe Schaap, who did a 48-1-3. Trente slowly working his way to the boat. Interesting uh, strategy. I'm wondering why uh, he's been held up so long, Jonathan. Well, you know, they haven't had a lot of time. But they know they've got an hour. <coughs> and all they've got to do is find two or three really clean laps where... They are not coming up against traffic. The conditions are right, and uh, there's still plenty of time. You know, we're 18, 18 minutes 41 uh, into the one-hour session. So as we pick Marit Stromoy up again, now she's down the back end of the circuit. She's definitely not going flat out at the moment. She's just biding her time. Uh, Stromoy at the moment, 1.01 behind the fastest time. Currently in sixth position, uh, just behind Al Hamli, Ahmed Al Hamli. So she's going well out here today. And let's hope, Steve, that she gets a bit of better luck because goodness she's had some bad luck in the last three or four races and always seemed to be fairly quick out there but never seemed to be able to do the job that she's capable of doing so fingers crossed the equipment and everything else is going to be in good shape today as we see Stromoy coming around you can see how it's getting a lot rougher down there now Steve down that far end of the circuit between five and six so you know some of these guys that haven't been out so far they don't want to leave it too late because if the weather starts changing and the wind starts picking from the, the far side over in Switzerland, and that's going to make sure that they're not going to be able to run such strong times. It's all about strategy and new faces and new places and new boats. And here's one of the new boats on the tour right now, Francesco Catando, introducing his new revolutionary Blaze boat. We heard a lot about it before we get a chance to see it. This is his first time that he's had a chance to test the boat, run it on the race conditions. He did not get a chance to test it in Italy. And uh, this morning he ran it uh, in uh, practice. He was down uh, about uh, the last third of the field getting used to this boat. And you can imagine what he's going through right now to set up a boat for the fir very first time, Jonathan. He's playing uh, very fast. He's like a hamster in a wheel right now trying to catch up. Yeah, not easy. But you can see that boat very, very different to what we're normally used to. The rear cowling, they've picked up one or two ideas from a Formula One uh, car. And uh, the deck profile is very different. The sponsors are all new. And they were hoping to do a, quite a big test program before coming here but unfortunately they broke uh, their best engine that they were going to use and uh, so he's got it all to do here today the boat is slowly but surely getting there but uh, at the moment he seems to be struggling let's see where he is he's coming around now to do his first lap as he comes down past the start finish line Cantando their 14th position 4.74 a lot to do yeah he's really trying to improve on it gained about a half a second and uh, jumped up to one position. He's now in 13th spot. So Francesco Catando with a new look. This driver, Catando out of Milan, is starting his 166 Formula One race. He's got 12 victories and 42 podiums. Now, we all started the history of the French Grand Prix back in 1981 in Vichy in the late great Case van der Velden from the Nederlands won the race. And then the two years next to, they were in Vichy in 82, Renato Molinari, who is here today, and helping out the victory team, won that race, the three-time world champion. And then in Lyon, they moved out in 1983, and Molinari won again. So they've raced in Vichy, Lyon, Paris, and Cherlon Sersal for many years, from 1990 to 2000 for 10 years, and then La Rochelle over on the West Coast. Back in 2007, that was Sami Celio's first ever victory. And then Evian the last two years. So we've moved around this great country, great tradition. And again, Jonathan, we've got five French pilots lined up in this race uh, lineup this weekend. Yeah, and I think that's great for France and great for the sport as we pick up Peter Morin, in, uh, who's the son-in-law of champion. And uh, basically, Chap said, you know, he didn't want to be racing forever. <clears throat> and he would really like to see Peter really taking over the mantle in that team, CTIC, 
China um, in the future. So Philippe, I think, is going to hang in there for another couple of years because he's still in pretty good shape. And he still is very, very fast as we pick up there Peter Morin's wife, who uh, does a lot of the uh, timing for him and uh, is on the radio system and telling him exactly where he is. Yeah, Fanny, she's very well involved. She's uh, watching and helping the family. They live so close to each other. They're all around the area in Rouen, France. And uh, now we get a chance to see the man, Sean Torrente, the victory team, the man out of Miami, Florida, who had the pole position in Portimao. And as you mentioned, Jonathan, the course has changed a bit. Maybe the strategy was uh, not maybe the one that's uh, the keenest right now. He's coming out a little bit later. We're 23 and a half minutes almost into this 60 minute one session winner take all for pole position here. So we see Torrente now down past the start finish line. He'll probably do a, a sighting lap, we call it. Um, uh, on his first lap just to make sure that he can see exactly what the water conditions are like uh, whether any of the turn boys have moved prior to uh, the free practice this morning and uh, just get himself dialed in get himself comfortable in the boat make sure that he's fully strapped in with that five-point harness this is a more boat incidentally built in France uh, the same boat run, or very similar to the boat run by uh, Philippe Chiap and Peter Morin, and uh, a very, it's really performing very, very well at the moment, and seems to be uh, the favoured boat of a lot of the front runners, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fast, it's good in rough water, it's a good all-rounder, and uh, that's why people do like uh, the, the performance of this boat at the Grand Prix. All right, as Torrente starts to pick the pace up, now that he's gone around the first time, this for him is his 36th career start. He's got four poles. He's got four victories. He's finished uh, runner-up in this championship before. And uh, for him, he's hoping to do it. He was the number two driver last year in the championship points. He'd love to win his first world title. He's got five national championships. In the USA, he's got four world speed records, and he is on the fly as he works his way down. And it'll be interesting to see how he sets himself up. He's sandwiched in the middle of a couple of other boats. That's not always ideal, Jonathan, when you're trying to lay down a fast lap. No, the other thing is he hasn't done himself any favors by not getting out there a little bit earlier. Because I saw him coming down past the start-finish line, and the boat was rocking from side to side and losing a bit of time. As we see him there now coming down into the right-hander on the far end of the circuit around turn number four. 450 meters now down to that fifth turn boy where it is definitely getting rougher than it was earlier on with earlier on this morning so we got him coming into five five then he's got a short shoot 120 meters into six throws the boat around there accelerates to this boat not to 60 mile an hour in just under two seconds as he comes down past the finish line doesn't look that good and his time is 13th best oh boy 52-3-5. He's, he's, he's got a fair bit to do um, to, uh, to improve on that, Steve. Uh, Bartek Marsalak, a guy from Poland, really has come on strong, Steve, in the last three or four races. Running a DSC has taken him a couple of years to get used to this very, very short, wide boat that accelerates like Bilio. Um, engines done by Alex Ledden again in, uh, in Canada. And uh, let's see what sort of time as he goes past the start line, down the 550 meters straight. You can see the boat there barely touching the water as he comes into turn number two, throws it around there. Very, very short shoot from two to three. They got a problem, Jonathan. Sorry to interrupt you. Problem down in turn number five somebody's barrel roll down there correct me if i'm wrong it's it, it's one of the uh, dubai boats it's either torrente or it's ahmed hamley i got to i'm sorry to say i think it is torrente actually could be is yeah. it steve yeah because i I'm yes just it looking is at the yep. nose, yeah. Sean torrente. Wow. what a shame for the driver out of florida <laughs> going over obviously you know it's interesting jonathan i didn't like his body language when he was walking down to get into yeah. his boat, he didn't look happy, yeah. and he didn't look like he was uh, ready for battle. And uh, obviously, this is going to curtail his efforts here. Thirteenth in this uh, situation right now for qualifying, and that's not a good sign here, because uh, they're going to have to do a lot of work to get this boat back for ship shape to run this afternoon. By the way, to start of this race, as you take a look at Sean Torrente, and you can see that he's had 13 career podiums and uh, a many-time North American champion who has uh, had a bit of a checkered career, but I'll tell you something, he's uh, really coming on strong, but this is something he didn't want to happen, happen to him. And uh, here in uh, 
Evian. Now he's going to have to quickly go back to the paddock. And let's see if we can see it on replay. Oh. Just barrel roll down in the corner, Jonathan. That's unusual. Yeah. On the straight, Steve. Right in front of his teammate, Ahmed Al Hamli, who was drifting off to the far side. Oh, mm, he stuffed it. it. He stuffed it and then barrel rolled as he launched it off a wave, Jonathan. Whether it was a rogue wave or not. And it was just too much to handle on that short boat. Stuffed it hard. That's an awful hard hit to take when you nose in like that. And then you barrel roll. So you do, it's literally a pirouette. And you do uh, two things at once, and both were uh, very not uh, clean for this boat. No, you could see there down the back straight, he settled the boat just coming into the corner. And as he did, he hit a wave, came off that wave, and then because the boat was fairly heavy on the front as he tried to settle it, it nosedived right into the uh, second wave. And that's really put him on the back foot now, because although he's okay there, a lot of work to be done, water in all the electrics now, water in the engine. They probably have to start at the back of the field now there's no question about that and uh, that's going to put him on the back foot for this race but we've seen Torrente before he started at the back watch out for him this afternoon he's got a point to prove and he'll be going absolutely flat out to try a and get a podium and even try and win this race this afternoon but not a good start for uh, team Dubai at the moment uh, and that's it he's obviously explained to the people uh, on the bank there exactly what happened and uh, you know I said Steve they some of these drivers have left things a little bit late, you know, to get out there. And with the conditions deteriorating um, every minute, really, it's, it's becoming difficult, especially when you're looking to get the maximum out of that boat and get that uh, pole position, which does make a big difference at this Grand Prix. Well, the funny thing was, was that uh, I stood up and he, he noticed noticed me and he said no no he said uh, that was skewing a bit and then he said i just launched off a wave and lost it and that's exactly what we saw in replay but uh his it, yeah interestingly enough the way we watch him go down this back straightaway he just uh he looked like he was just starting to get into his rhythm and then start to move on as you can see uh dr francesco there with him and you, you can see him he levels it out and he Ooh. launched off the wave stuffed it but not hard enough because the momentum carried him through and he barrel rolled so luckily he didn't take a hard submarine nosedive it slowed him up actually jonathan enough mm. to make the barrel roll not so intense mm. so he took off some speed when he stuffed it and then again there you go uh, over uh, once and then over the second time. Yeah, you could see that when he came off the first wave, it just caught the pickle, the front of the boat. It just caught it there slightly. And then, of course, once one side went in, it, it dug in a little bit. The boat turned over. In fact, barrel rolled twice. And uh, um, it's really sort of, although he was smiling there, I can tell you now, a lot of the team are not going to be smiling. And uh, they've got a heck of a lot of work to do before the, the race this weekend. So where are we at the moment, Steve Carell? still leading the way, 0.8 uh, ahead of Chiap Celio in third. Yeah, the big thing for uh, a driver who does have an incident like that, they go off the circuit, they first uh, speak to the doctor, the official doctor says, uh, you know, he looks him over real quick, and if he's uh, very uh, in a situation where he feels very uh, positive about the situation, that the doctor uh, will give him the pass to go on, and then he'll go to the ambulance, and they will check him over. The local uh, physicians will see that if he's uh, all right or whether the adrenaline is running. You know what it's like when somebody has an accident and the adrenaline takes off. Sometimes it disguises some injuries that people may have. So they have to settle him down a bit and really look him over uh, closely. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, because, you know, what you, what you don't want to show anybody is that if you are hurting, that you know you've got some kind of issue because otherwise they're not going to let you race but uh, so you know I've, I've been there a few times you know where you've hurt your arm or your leg or whatever and the last thing you want to do is get the uh, UIM officials and the, and the doctors to say look I think you should sit this one out because you're desperate to get back out there this afternoon. All right, the race commissioner wave. He's uh, brings the green flag back out. We're back to full speed racing. We check the time. And we've gone past the 32-minute mark, so we've got 27 uh, minutes and 50 seconds remaining as we count it down here, Jonathan. Yeah, at the moment, like I said uh, just uh, a few moments ago, we've got Corella from Chiat, from Celio, 
Al Kwamzi, Thani Al Kwamzi in fourth position. That's a good position for him at the moment, the Abu Dhabi driver. Grant Trask from Australia still in that fifth. Al Hamli sixth and Mar Mar Marit Stromoy in that seventh. All right, get a chance to look at Jonas Anderson. He's been kind of quiet so far. He's down in the 11th position. He's 2.8 seconds behind Alex Corella in his battle for pole position. Now, Jonas Anderson has gotten very, very uh, tough in his qualifying lately. He's been making a statement. He had two poles at the end of last year, and for him, he's got uh, three in his career. This will be his 83rd start, and the driver from uh, Fruby Suite, the 43-year-old, uh, who was hoping to improve. Now, last year, he qualified up in the eighth spot but failed to finish the race. And uh, last year, by the way, was his best season, Jonathan, since 2008 when he also finished uh, third in the championship. So Jonas Anderson came on strong at the end of last season, but he kind of went out with a whimper in that first race where he uh, failed to finish and finished uh, 14th in the events. Yeah, Jonas uh, working with this boat is actually built in uh, Denmark. It's uh, by, by uh, a Danish uh, builder, and uh, Jonas has been working very, very hard with him over the last couple of three years to perfect this boat, and uh, is, uh, it's a Molgard, actually. Sorry, I, I, I was thinking of some other boat earlier. But it's, it's a Molgard boat, and uh, Christian Molgard that uh, builds and designs this boat, working very closely with Jonas Anderson. And Jonas has really got this boat sorted out now in the last couple of three Grand Prix, and uh, very fast. He does his own engine rebuilding, his own engine tuning. He takes on a massive task. Um, I know that the motors are shipped back to his uh, shop after every Grand Prix to be rebuilt and, and retuned and everything. And uh, he's doing a great job out there at the moment. And, uh, you know, good chance of Jonas, if everything keeps together, good chance of him, um, him getting on that podium today. Jonas Anderson in three starts in Grand Prix in France has two podiums. So it's uh, is his wife Janie looking on, talking to him. See Scott Gilman in the back who has won this race. Scott Gilman, who is a Hall of Fame member now, reaches the Ring of Honor. He had uh, his victory back in 1997 at uh, Chalon-sur-Saint. And uh, Jonathan, for you, what do you think? Uh, really, right now, it's a, it's a big surprise that I see on the board as we take a look at Trente marching back, and he's going to get a chance to look at his boat for the very first time. They just brought it in now. And uh, they'll quickly crane it out of the water and get it back as fast as possible with the paddock. He's wanting to make sure they take a very uh, judicious look and they, they take their time in draining the water out of it because you don't want to lift the boat out with all the water and the extra ra weight in there because of the extra tension you can put mm. on it. And you can actually start uh, breaking the boat up if you don't yeah. uh, let the water come out. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to lighten the boat and then bring it out very cautiously out of the water. Yeah, and you can see there, it looks to me like on the uh, right-hand side of the boat, there is some damage on the top of the deck there. You can see the way the water's coming out. Looks like they've cracked the deck, but that's not a major problem. And uh, they'll have to get the fuel out of there now, get all the electrics dried out. They'll have to strip the engine down. So they've got a lot of work to do in the next couple of three hours now to get that boat in, boat in ship shape form for the, uh, for the Grand Prix later this afternoon. You look out on the water, and it's one of the Maverick drivers, one of the many French drivers here. That's uh, More uh, Josson, the driver who is uh, from Paris. He's 41 years old. This is only his second career F1 start. He used to be a recent offshore racer, Jonathan. Last year he was running in the Class 3 World Championship. He spent a lot of time running in endurance racing, like a lot of French drivers have in the past. And uh, he retired and came back. And uh, for him, he's uh, recreating the feeling of going fast in a, uh, a boat that, uh, you know, they ran S3000 and now he's running Formula One. So he's on a giant learning curve. And poor T Maui qualified 17th and failed to finish. Yeah, I think he's probably going to get out there today and just enjoy himself. You know, he's, he's going to keep out of the way of the front runners. He knows he's not quick enough as yet. Although the boat is very capable. It's, again, one of these Moore boats, the French uh, boat builder David Moore making these boats in northern, uh, northern France. So he knows he's got a good bit of... Uh, 
kit that he's working with, and uh, but he hasn't quite got the experience and to push as hard as some of these front runners. Yeah, interesting guy. He's a finance man uh, manager for an insurance and real estate uh, company, and is uh, president of the world's oldest powerboat racing club that was dated back in 1896 in Paris. But the big thing that's fun about him, he owns many historic classic cars and race boats that he has so he's got he's got quite a tool of uh, different uh, toys to play with when he's at home yeah yeah well it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on today and uh, let's hope he can finish the race this afternoon keep everything together and uh, i would say for him a top 10 would be a, probably a dream yeah it would be right now he's uh, just a shade over nine seconds off the pace so again a heavy learning curve he's on lap number eight in qualifying as we check out now we get very very close to the 22 minute mark remaining here in this 60 minute session totally different we're glad you're with us steve michael jonathan jones and we are on lovely lac Léman, and we are in evian france which is a, a large alpine lake and the largest alpine lake in europe behind us is mont blanc and across the uh, lake is Lausanne, Switzerland. And yes, ferry boat traffic runs back and forth. So we have to actually time sessions to meet up with the uh, boat traffic. Because if you remember, Jonathan, years ago, 2005, we're in Como. We're watching a race where, where Scott Gilman is just disappearing from the rest of the field. He had like a 45-second lead on everybody else. And he got caught up and stuffed the boat on a rogue way from a ferry boat. Well, such a lead, he could not believe it. You had the same problem in uh, yeah. Crete, well, no, in uh, Corfu one time. Yeah, yeah, you know, it happens. And you've got to concentrate right the way to the end of the race, you know, to the checkered flag, because when you've got a big lead, it sometimes is not too good a thing because uh, you're not sort of quite so focused. As uh, we pick up the number 14 boat there now, Jonas Anderson, um, currently down in 11th position, 2.8 seconds off the, uh, off the, the fastest uh, time. And, you know, again, Steve, what I, what I said earlier, you know, he's left it a little bit late to get out there. Um, we see now in the last five or ten minutes some of these boats really having handling problems uh, and not being able to really push as hard as they can. I mean, the guys that got that were on the money, to be fair, was people like Benevente and, uh, and Grant Trask who were on the water right at the beginning. And that's really helped them to... Uh, to get some decent times in there and uh, and it's showing you know Grand Trust still hanging on there in fifth that's a great performance for that Australian driver yeah he's been the surprise so far of this setup now uh, the other surprise is Sean Torrente going out I had the pole at the first round in Portugal and he is down there with Gemma Gemma you got the American yes I have indeed uh, Sean first of all what happened out there oh I got impatient we were breaking a new motor in and it was really good and I felt the conditions were getting worse, so I just wanted to get a lap in. And I broke one of my own rules of leaving someone out in front there when it's bad like that. So my radio man couldn't see what I hit, which was just a big patch of rollers. First one was okay. Second one, I knew it was going bad because the boat kind of went sideways a little bit. And then the third one, it just snap rolled. It was real slow. I mean, no big deal. I'm just mad. And what do you think the implications are? I mean, I've seen you checking the boat out. I'm going to have to pass a lot of freaking boats on the race. That's what the implications are. So we're, the boat's fine. So we can either run that or run my backup boat, which is basically identical. So uh, I don't know. We'll see which one we'll run, but we'll be fine for the race. We'll start last, and like I said, we got a lot of boats, a lot of boats to pass. So we'll see. And, and you're feeling okay? You're all right? You're not hurt? Oh, just my feelings. <laughs> just, just your feelings and your pride. And I'm, I'm fine, Mama. All right, Mama, I'm fine. <laughs> all right, there we go. Everybody rest assured. Sean is fine. Boys, back to you in the studio. Well, it's always good to know of the uh, Florida State student who, uh, as we said, many time North American champion and still uh, getting his feet wet here in Formula One, but uh, finished second in the championship a year ago, almost won the title. He had to win in Sharjah, and he did that, but uh, Philippe Shep conquered his third straight world title by finishing up on the top 10 and he took the title and today Philippe Shep's trying to win for the very first time here in France as we look back at Francesco Catando new radical blaze boat we're talking about it as we said it's a it's a huge uh, departure from what we're used to seeing but again this is the very first time he's got the hole wet and he's really on a, the backside trying to catch up and right now Catando's down at 16th he's about 4.2 seconds back of our lead and he's panning his way around. This is his 11th lap out here, John. Yeah, just looking at the way that this boat's running, if you look at the angle that it's running on the water, um, he's having to really 
trim that engine a long way out to get that boat to accelerate because and when the boat's running down the straight Steve you can see that the no it's it's the nose is right up in the air well that's a bit like pushing a big barn door through the water because you're creating drag with the tunnel of the boat and uh, that's definitely not helping him I looked at this boat yesterday and the profile of the uh, the deck that I mean that by that I mean the shape of the deck normally you've got an area on the deck which is built like a wing of an aircraft which creates lift and he's because he, he feels that the boat's very short it does not need a lot of lift so there's very little profile there which means that it's basically a flat deck and that's why he's having to run this boat and trim it out as far as you can see there now running at about 20 degrees as he goes down the straight and then you can see it's difficult to balance this boat uh, on the water when these conditions get rough I think it's only because he's such an experienced driver that he's able to actually run it as it is at the moment but you know as we said it's early days it's the first time that this boat got wet um, uh, earlier this morning in free practice and uh, you know he may have to change the design of the propellers the weight of the boat moving the ballast around a little bit before he can actually get it really dialed in so my view Steve is that he's going to be using this race just as a bit of a test session he's down in 16th position at the moment he's 4.28 seconds off Corella who's uh, who's leading the field still studying it still trying to figure out kind of trying to solve the puzzle here but uh, we'll see how that pans out now yeah. Grant Trask continues to be the big surprise here he's up in that fifth spot remember this is only his fourth career Formula One race he's down with Gemma Gemma yes so Grant this is your Evian debut how have you found it you've just come off the water Ah, so far so good. We're uh, sitting fifth at the moment, so hopefully we can stay there and not get docked down. But, you know, it's starting to get a bit choppy again like it was yesterday, so we thought, we, you know, we're very happy with where we're placed when we pulled the boat out, so we'll save it for the race. And just thinking ahead to the race, how are you going to approach that now that you've seen what the conditions are like and how everybody else is faring? Same way as usual. Go fast, turn left. You are so relaxed. I love it. You're just so chilled. Yeah, well, there's no point in getting nervous, you know. Go out there and have fun and do your best and, you know, hopefully not get wet. Well, you're clearly performing very well, so best of luck for the race, and uh, go and do what you need to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, back to the race course. Uh, Grant Trask joins a, a large array of Australian drivers, Craig Bailey, Aries Coles, Kay Marshall, David and Bob Trask. Of course, uh, his uncle and his father raced here, and he's uh, 28 years young. And this year, by the way, Jonathan, he won the uh, Unlimited Outboard Championship as well down under. So uh, hats off to the youngster who's just getting his feet wet. And he's looking very, very positive and very, very cool out there right now. Yeah, he is. And, you know, let's not forget, he, he may be new to Formula One, but he's certainly not new to racing. Um, you know, Bob Trust, his father, has nurtured this guy over many, many years. He started off in the smaller classes and moved into the top Australian class, as it were. They call it the unlimited class there. So, you know, he's got a lot of experience. And I have heard that uh, later on in the year, Steve, they've got a boat of their own design, which they're going to be introducing into Formula One. Yeah, that'll be very, very interesting to see how that pans out. First time we're really focusing in on a two-time world champion. Sami Selio out of Finland, and Selio comes in after finishing second, runner-up in Portimao. He sits second in the championship, and for him, that's kind of a big surprise because the last couple of years he started off a little bit slow. He had to play catch-up in the points race, but this year he's had a solid start, and uh, currently right now Selio is in third place in qualifying, nine-tenths of a second off, and Sami Selio, who is a, a wily veteran, 42 years old, and uh, who makes his uh, off-season home in Tenerife. He's from Helsinki. And uh, Celio, he knows it all. He's seen it before. His very first victory ever in Formula One right here, 2007, the year that kick-started his first world championship over in La Rochelle. Yeah, um, Sami running a Baba boat. Uh, this boat is built in northern Italy by Massimo Rogero. Um, these boats have done really, really well over the last four to five years. And, uh, you know, there's some new boats on the field now, but this really was the benchmark for some time. Celio, massive amount of experience, very strong team behind him well funded as i understand and uh sell you at the moment in that third slot 0.91 he'd be just walking his way around the uh around the circuit now steve just seeing what the conditions are like he'll know whether he can put in a really fast lap and if he does whether he'll be able to improve on uh, his existing time 0.91 seconds as we stand down on corella but very very close and uh, I think if he can do it on this lap, that will really show that he's very, very capable as we pick up the 
board number 14, Jonas Anderson. Spoken a little bit about him. That's the Molgard board built in Denmark, in Denmark by Christian Molga. But you can see, Steve, the board bouncing around on that far end of the circuit. And every time it bounces on top of the waters, we see it gliding there, coming down to the start-finish line. That's slowing it down by a hundredth of a second. And, you know, that means a heck of a lot when you've got to get everything perfect here to get that pole position. Yeah, the water conditions continue to change, and it's getting tougher and tougher for these late arrivals to move up for Jonas Anderson. He's down in the 11th spot. He's still 2.8 off, and he's trying to get himself back in contention to at least make a run up into the top five. Anderson, however, this is his 83rd career start. He's got five victories on the tour. And for him, uh, his best qualifying here in France ever was a six that he did in 2015. And uh, his best finish was a second also two years ago. So he's made it to the podium. And uh, Jonas Anderson has a lot of work left to do in order for him to be a, a true factor to get up into the top five. Yeah, and you could see there down the back straight, he was on a fast lap again, and he had to back off because of those uh, those little roll waves that uh, caught Sean Torrente out just a little bit earlier. So he's making another sweeping lap now of the circuit. I think he's gonna he's coming down past the start finish line. Yeah, but he's just taking over. So I don't know whether we're gonna. Yeah, he's pulling off the circuit. So is he gonna do any more? 11 minutes and 32 seconds to go to the end of this session, Steve. Well, back to the Maverick team. Remember, three different drivers on this large team, all from France. And this is uh, Amore Jasson. And Amore, again, this is only his second career start for the 41-year-old. He's back out there. We checked for him. He's down in the 18th position. Jonathan, he just improved from being 9.3 seconds back. He jumped up to 7.7 .7 seconds back of the leader. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big step. But that means that, it, you know, he's still not running at full chat. There's no question. You can see there the board just cruising around, checking the water like some of the other drivers were doing earlier on and uh, just looking to try and get a clear lap where there's no other boats going to uh, impede on, on you driving around the circuit. And also, you know, you're going to get a bit of flat water. It's coming down the back straight there now, starting to put his foot down a little bit more just to feel the water and uh, you know as, he, as we say he's uh, he's got a tall order really to try and move up on that position uh, as we see Benevente going through now done another lap Benevente in that eighth position 1.12 seconds off and uh, I think he's going to struggle to get it any faster out there and uh, on the far end of the circuit now Ma uh, Bartek Marsalak um, he ran so well in Portugal and uh, unfortunately was held up by a back marker for some time. Otherwise, I think we would have seen that guy on the podium. And uh, another guy to watch out for this weekend because uh, he really does seem to have the bit between his teeth at the moment uh, as we pick up Benevente. All right, Benevente now third in this championship at his home Grand Prix. He made it to the podium after starting and qualifying in that sixth spot. Last year here in Evian, he started eighth and he finished seventh. Now... Benavente, unusual situation here, Jonathan. He has gone eight races in a row without dropping out, and he's always been up in the top ten. So he's uh, been a steady driver, and again, getting him back up on the pole. It's the fifth time in his career that he finished up in the uh, top ten of the championship. So for him, it's a 131st start. He's at 18 top fives. He's still looking for his first victory. Yeah, he's, uh, he's come along quite well in this moor boat. He seems very comfortable in it. I mean, he's tried everything. He was one racing one of my boats for many years. Um, and then he went and moved to the Baba boat with Massimo Ruggiero. Now he's in a, a David Moore design boat. And uh, I don't know, I spoke to him this morning. I said, well, what is the difference? And he said, <laughs> to be honest, very, very little. He said that the boat that I he used to race of mine the other day, he said it's pretty much on the pace. With, with They tested three boats last week. And he said it's very much on the pace. So I think he's going with this boat because he feels a little bit more comfortable in race conditions. And uh, he comes down past the start-finish line again there now, Steve. No, no improvement on the time. He's three seconds slower than he was when he got out earlier on in the session. You can see his father uh, just in the middle. And there you see Bob Trask, who is the long-time racer in Formula One from 2002 to 2008. Uh, very pleased with his son who's sitting in that fifth spot, and they're all eyes now glued on this man, Duarte Benavente, as we talked about. 
His podium, by the way, that he got at his home Grand Prix was the second time he got a podium there, but it's first podium since Doha in 2014. That was 18 races ago, so he's got to be pleased with that. But again, he's sitting in that eighth place position, pretty much standard fare for uh, for this driver from Lisbon. Yeah, I mean, he finished third in Portugal, but he was a little bit lucky there because there were so many the front markers, front runners that uh, did drop out. So. Um, you know, but again, he finished, and that's what you've got to do to uh, to get points and, and move up the championship as we pick up uh, Marit Stromoy again there, down the far end of the circuit. Now, let's just see whether she can improve uh, on that time. She's sitting in seventh at the moment, 1.01 second off the pole position, and just behind Ahmed Al Hamli, barely a tenth. So, uh, interesting to see how she gets on. Interestingly enough, Jonathan, the difference between third and where Marit Stromoy is in seventh is only really a tenth of a second because it's all sandwiched in between Celio 0.91 Alquimsey a hundredth of a second back Ooh. Grant Trask three one hundredths of a second back then Al Hamley with uh, 0.98 and then Strumoy 1.01 seconds back so it's all tight and there's still a chance but as we said the conditions are less than ideal right now as we take a look at the man uh, Barz Martak Barzlock now he's moved up Marswak's up into the 10th spot, yeah. but he's uh, running hard. He's got a lot of laps in. This is his 21st lap that he's chasing, and he needs to improve by about 8 tenths of a second to get past Philip Roms, who's ahead of him in that ninth place position. Yeah, but you can see he's, he's putting up a reasonably good time. The other thing is by putting in all these laps, Steve, it's, it's giving him a feel for what he's got ahead of him this afternoon, you know. A lot of the drivers, they just do one or two laps. But Bartek, you know, he, he, he wants to get more of a feel for this boat. Every time he sits in it, he says he finds about a tenth or a slightly less than a tenth of a second a lap. And that's, that's helping him. And uh, so he's doing a, pretty much a, a, a race setup here now rather than going for a, an out-and-out -out, uh, uh, lap time and making sure that the boat is balanced nicely and that uh, he's going to be comfortable for the Grand Prix itself. Well, I'll tell you what, as we watch him go around, now Cedric De Guin is the key member. He is the mastermind behind this Maverick F1 team and uh, a big strong contingent of three french drivers again he had a whale of a race and evian last year starting seventh finishing fourth and he is long with gemma down in the paddock gemma cedric you say there's not a good feeling uh, at the moment just talk us through it yes this, this is a place that i know very well i i race a lot time here and uh the last year i finished in the fourth position and uh with the new boat here the, the boat is, uh, um, how can I say that, is not a good position on the water. The back of the, the boat is go outside all the time. And they, you do exactly the same thing that you should do in the turn on the right. Turn. And um, the proper that I use is very longer and uh, it's not easy for me to, to, be, to be in the, in the good position. So we have the 12th position now. Uh, and I, I can't do a, a best thing. Not much more you can do. Sorry. There's not much more you can do about that. Yeah, we, I, I, I make this time in the first lap the, at, at the start, and after all the all the of the lap is is down. So I can't do nothing now. It's something about this course and Frenchmen. It evades all of you. But who knows? You may come back in the next race. We'll see. I. I can you repeat please i'm sorry <laughs> no worries no worries i'm just saying this course is yeah. difficult for many of the drivers but oh, yeah. especially the french drivers yeah, yeah. <laughs> no she, she's she's uh she's not easy for us because uh, the last year uh philippe uh, has broken his, his boat for me it was a uh, it was a good rest the last year this is I say that uh, this is a, a place that I know very well. Mm. I'm a lot of uh, a lot of time here in Formula One, but uh, with the French Championships in the S3000. So I, I want to. I am better in the race during the race with the mini wave, and uh, for for the time trial, I'm not. I have good. I'm not the, the good setup. Okay. Well, do you know what? We'll see what you do in the race. Thank, Thank you for you. talking to us. Back to you. <laughs> nice job, Gemma. That was funny. He goes, uh, what'd you say? 
Anyway, we're down to about three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Three minutes, 20 seconds left, Jonathan. And he's, he was saying he yeah. didn't feel comfortable in the boat. What does that mean? Well, it means that this year he's probably got one of the shorter moor boats. And the big problem with this is when the boats get very, very short, as long as the conditions are flat, like the top of a table, you can run them at maximum speed right the way around the circuit. But as soon as it starts getting rough, the boat only has to be 20, 25 centimeters shorter to make the difference between you handling it and not handling it. And that's what's happened. We've got about three or four Grand Prix coming up now on very flat water. We've got two in China and another one in Asia after that. And we know the conditions are flat. Uh, the problem is trying to find a boat that, and it's so difficult, you can't find a boat that's going to run in all conditions perfectly. So for me, out here, it's better off just to have that extra little bit of length in the sponsons. And by I, by I mean a little bit, like I say, 25 centimeters or thereabout. It may it's an enormous difference, but he does know going forward for the rest of the season he's going to be in very, very good shape. The one thing I would say is that, uh, as he said earlier, he said qualifying is not going to be good, but he thinks in the race he, he'll do a good job. Yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Now, he also mentioned that the uh, French drivers uh, could have been doing better today. Well, Philippe Shep, who is a three-time world champion who hasn't uh, finished a race here yet, qualifying well. He's up in the second spot. He's eight-tenths of a second behind Alex Corella. But as you slide down the list and you take a look at the drivers, Cedric Deguin is in that 13th spot. And uh, also, uh, Peter Mora is down in the 15th spot. And then the other two drivers, the rookie drivers from that Maverick team, are 18th and 19th. And the big surprise is Eric Stark has not started. No. Morin just coming through there now. Where are we? He was in 15th, uh, 3.4 seconds down. He's going for another lap, Steve. He looks a bit more comfortable in the board. I think they must have had one or two niggly problems initially getting uh, getting the performance out of the board. Don't know what it is, but no, he's backed off again. So uh, he's down a little bit at the moment and uh, seems to be struggling. We see Cantando out there again, trying to improve on that lap time, still in that 16th position, 4.28 off. All right, as we watch Brent Stromoy and then Francesco continue here in the last final moments less than a minute to go 58 seconds and rolling here desperation time it's all or nothing right now as this party continues to roll on in the final minute they're pushing for glory on the golf who will get the pole right now it looks like it's Alex Corella who is hoping to nail down his second pole in a row here in Evian and it would be his 13th of his career as he's holding on to that Eight tenths of a second cushion as you watch Catando as he desperately tries to dig himself out of a hole. He's down in 16th position and he continues to roll along. And pushing hard also as we see Eric Stark finally making it out into the water. Jonathan Stark is out and he is running in that 15 machine for Team Sweden. This will be his last opportunity. It's all or nothing for the driver from Sweden who's down into turn number two. Yep, Stark, he just got past the start-finish line. Very, very close with only about 10 seconds to go. He's obviously had a problem out there. Where is he at the moment on the circuit? He's right down on the far end of the circuit. He's on now turn number four, Jonathan. Coming into number four. That's the tight right-hander down the far end. The boat is rocking from side to side. He's trying to do everything humanly possible. He has to slow down there. Rough conditions there into the last turn, five to six, Steve. All right, as he comes out of turn number six, can Eric Stark jump from the bottom, the 20th spot? How far will he move out? We hold our breath as he comes across the line, and Eric Eric Stark in that one lap jumps himself all the way up into the ninth position. Wow, what a great run for a man who had no time at all to really get the feel for this race course. And the young Swede goes all the way up into the ninth place position for this four-time Formula 2 champion. Yeah. Oh, he left that right until the end. They obviously had some kind of issue with something, maybe the engine or whatever. We don't know, but uh, just to do one lap without even having a sighting lap. I mean, uh, that's a pretty good performance there from Stark up to that ninth. Yeah, Stark, he had tied for second in qualifying in uh, Portugal with Amadel Hamley, but his second lap was slower, so he was classified as third. He started second in the race, thought he had the runner-up spot with uh, the penultimate lap left to go with two laps laps remaining he had a, a flat battery the boat came to a stop ended his race in tears he finished up he was classified eighth 
but Eric Stark desperately got out there at the very last seconds, got around, got himself set up, took one lap around, and Stark jumps up to ninth place. What a great way to end this long 60-minute one qualifying session because of the rough conditions that we've had here for the last two days, Jonathan. Drama right to the last few seconds. Yeah, it certainly was. And uh, so as we stand at the moment, pole position goes to Alex Carella. Chiap, the current world champion, just a hair behind him in second with Celio, who I'm sure will be happy with that third uh, third position. But uh, it's all to go for this afternoon. We don't know what the conditions are going to be like, Steve, do we? They could get worse. They could get better. But uh, it's going to be a real open race, and I wouldn't like to put money on anybody. Well, as you look at that opening page, there you have it. you got Corella, who is uh, number one today, but he's fourth in the championship. Philippe Shep, who leads the championship, will start in the number two position. And, uh, of course, Sami Celio, who's second in the championship, will start third. And then Thaniel Quimsey in that fourth spot. As you look farther down now, there you see Eric Stark, who came charging up uh, just ahead of Philip Roms, who's been on the podium here twice in the last two races. Bartek Marzouak working his way up. And as we look farther down in there, the big surprise, of course, Sean Torrente, who lasted only three laps out there. He completed three laps. And... Uh, Hit the wave and uh, was still getting the feel for the circuit and uh, hit a bit of a rogue wave and he launched the boat. He stuffed it and then uh, barrel rolled at the same time, which dissipated speed and it really, as he said, didn't really hurt the boat much. But he knows he's starting in the back of the pack, so it'll be fun to watch one of the fastest drivers in the world. Sean Torrendi come charging up from the very last spot and move himself up. Let's see how far he can get today. As you take a look at the three-time world champion, Philippe Shep, he's only got one thing in mind today, and that is to finish a race here yeah. in France. Yeah, dead right. I think the, the main thing for him is he knows that that boat is really, really quick off the start line. I know that uh, Alex uh, Ledden, the engine tuner, has been working with our team to get, because they know the times are so close. What they're trying to do is they want to try and get as much acceleration off the, off the, uh, the start dock and into the first turn. And, uh, you know, that's what they're going to be working on. But also Capolini and Carella, who at the moment are in pole position, will know that. So they themselves are going to be pushing as hard as they can. It's all on the start. All right, we're going to find out this afternoon for those stations leaving us now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 15.